Hey, good morning. Jay Nicholas and Chris Daughters at the Catisfy. We're having fun here. Uh, I don't know what order you're going to see these in, but these are some Brad's Brat modifications. And this particular one is uh, inspired by a trip I was fortunate enough to go on to the Upper Dean last year. Fish for Summer Steelhead. And it's, it's always fun. I, you know, steelhead are steelhead, whether they're in the Great Lakes or South America, Pacific Northwest. But, you know, you go to different places and people have their favorite little flies. And it's fun to see them and tie them and fish them. This fly is tied on a size 8, $79.99. Got a little short kip tail tail. And I'm going to run my thread all the way up along the hook. That's just to help me keep that body even. This is a fly I was shown. Actually, I was shown a fly that's similar to this, but what I'm gonna what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna show you the key features of a fly that wound up being very effective. So, so summer steelhead, you're maybe 50 miles from the ocean. By the way, I'm going to use uh, uni yarn for the body. I forgot to tie it in, so I'm going to do that now. Might help. Slender body. And this is a fly that will fish uh, just under the surface on a Dry, say a dry line, say an airflow compact or rage compact, um, or a Rio salmon and uh, Atlantic salmon and steelhead dry line. If you're using a single hander, and you can use a traditional leader, monofilament leader. If you're spay fishing, um, say a Rio or an Airflow, uh, say an Airflow Rio Versaliter or an Airflow Polyliter, either in floating or intermediate. Um, and this fly, long leader, clear water. Perfect, classic tail outs, just steelhead water to die for. Um, they'll be swinging across, and, and you'll see about where the fly is, and you'll see a little dimple on the water. And if you're good, if you've been training yourself, you just hang on to your rod, and that fish will start taking off. Now, sometimes you just see the little dimple, sometimes. You, they will just explode on this fly. Pardon me. See, I got to talking so much, I forgot the important part. Which is the really unique feature. I have not seen this done with flies of this nature in lower 48, but I'm sure somebody's doing it. Is a fairly narrow, dry fly hackle palmered over this body. When I first saw this, I thought, well, that's kind of silly. Why would you do that? Well, I fished the fly, and my gosh, it was very effective. And it's kind of a cool effect. Now, this is almost as if you're tying uh, an elk hair caddis. Get that out of the way in terms of winding the hackle, or willy bugger, winding the hackle towards the back of the hook, and then counter wrapping with your, you can use copper wire or small oval tinsel to secure that hackle. Now I suspect, you know, if you want to think, if you want to overthink this, this fly is effective because that, those hackles create a little bit more turbulence in the water. 
No, come on, can that, can that, I don't know if that's true. But, fact is, this fly works. And when you tie something on and you hook a fish, why not tie it on again? Now, again, BC, like loose body. Notice I'm not going to stack this so it's a little bit on the scraggly side. And I don't want this to be very long. But I'm going to tie this in elk hair caddis style so that the head sticks up like that. And I'm going to add, I'm going to put in one strand of crystal flash. Put my thread right through that bit of moose hair, double it over. So I now have two strands of crystal flash, not long. And I'm going to tie my knot right in the middle of that moose hair. And so again, that, that little, that rough head standing up, a little bit of turbulence. You can fish this, uh, say you can fish 8 pound tippet with a uni loop knot, or you can hitch this fly so it will come across the river and make a nice wake. But here you go Brad's Brat BC Steelhead Tie.